Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Xandria, The Wonder Still Awaiting, out February 3rd on Napalm Records. The album has 13 tracks, 74 minutes in length, and this is the band's 8 full length studio record. They are a German symphonic metal band. The design of this album tries to give more life to the record. I'm not a big fan of the length of the album. Now that has nothing to do with the design or the structure, because the structure tries to make this album more dynamic, more engaging, more interesting ebbs and flows constantly, a record that offers a lot of different sound experiences from song to song, and then it in places in key spots of the overall design songs that have more of a ballad style sound and experience so that you have a little bit of a reprieve, you have a little bit of a break, allowing you to better understand what got you to that point and then re-engage yourself with the experience that comes after. Those kind of songs are really important in order to cut the linearity of the record. And this album has all of those attributes in its design. As far as the sound is concerned, this is a very rich sounding album. It has a great experience on every single song. It's an album that uses the symphonic side of the band as the backdrop, as the spinal cord of everything else that is happening. In some songs, that same spinal cord drives the experience, and then there's other songs when it becomes more of a layer and allows itself to better intertwine with the drums and guitars. This is where the diversity comes in, the diversity of sound, the diversity of experience that you're gonna see for yourself when you listen to this album from the first to the last track. Infusing some pop elements in order for you to have more hookier, catchier tracks, infusing higher demand of the symphonic side of the band in order for you to have more epic, cinematic style songs, and then tracks that feel somewhat in the middle of those two. Uh, pushing some of those boundaries together, but at the same time allowing you to feel like these tracks have their own identity, have their own DNA. A very individualistic record on a song-by-song -song basis. And this allows you to have 13 singles. Because this album does have incredible songs when you look at them individually. The quality, the production, the design, the overall execution, the concept behind them. These tracks have a life of their own. It's just sometimes hard to find the connection between them outside of that symphonic backdrop. The drums on this record have power, but they never really overpower the listener. It's not an album that uh, depends on the drums to create that cinematic perspective, to create that epic sound, to create volume, to create substance. That is happening because of all of the different layers coming together and having a sense of simplicity across them that allows you to better understand exactly what each and every single one of them is doing. But this doesn't mean that the drums don't play an important role because I felt like they were always there in order to solidify the, the bottom line, in order to solidify the foundation of every single song and the sound that they carry. Very subdued, very subtle in their way, but very important in order to give consistency to these tracks. The guitars also have a subtle diversity to them. Everything outside of the symphonic elements is very subtle on this record. They play an impact, but they're not necessarily in your face. The guitars are no different. The guitars are not the driver on any single song on this album, but they're a very loud passenger. That's how they come across. The solos are phenomenal. I enjoyed the life that they brought. I enjoyed the, the energy that they gave to the tracks. They always felt like they were extremely connected with the direction of the song and with the overall experience that the song was trying to create and put forward. So the guitar work, while not necessarily in your face, it's a guitar work that has a positive impact on the experience, allowing it to be a little bit of the glue, a little bit of, uh, uh, of the movement, the air that breathes in and allows those symphonic elements to either be pushed into the forefront or to be more designated to a background role, but always be there one way or another. So the guitars play a very interesting role in designating where those, or at least making you feel like they're designating where those symphonic elements are going. Vocally, they have a new vocalist. I mean, they have a pretty much new band all around, but a new vocalist, and that always comes with a little bit of inquire in terms of what that what does that mean for the band? What does that mean for the sound? Well, before I get into that, let me just say that the choirs that they used, the backing vocals, the layers of the vocals all around, the harsh vocal, all of these elements added to that richness of sound and experience that the album has. But Amber has a great voice. She is a great vocalist, and I feel like for an album that has this sort of diversity of approach, but still grounded in those symphonic elements, she has the right range and the right voice to really feel comfortable 
in that role. Some songs allow her to be a little bit more in the forefront, specifically those more stripped down, melancholic, ballad-like type songs. You can feel a little bit more of her, uh, uh, you can see a little bit more of her in those tracks. She's not uh, taken over by everything else that's happening around her. And the symphonic, the symphonic driven songs, the more cinematic, operatic songs, if you will, she's still in the forefront, but she's catapulted there by that sound that stands behind her. And she showcases her talent on any single style, on any single approach, or in either two of these extremes that this album offers. And that just goes to show you the quality that she has to be going, begin with. All around, this is an album, and I'll stick with this, this is an album that has great individual songs, but it doesn't feel like a great record in terms of the experience of going from beginning to end. 13 tracks, 74 minutes. This hurts the overall playability. It's very hard to listen to this album, get to the last song and feel like you could go back to it again. You just listen to it for 74 minutes. You need some time to breathe and you need some time to digest it. All the ebbs and flows and all the breaks that the design of the record have are not enough to give you that. So I think this album needed to be a little bit more concise in order for the overall playability of the record to be a lot higher. But that takes nothing away from the individual quality of the songs. If you're gonna digest this album as singles, listen to a song here and there, then you have great songs, you have 13 singles to pick from. If you're going from beginning to end, it's a little bit exhausting and a little bit demanding from the listener. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I'm gonna start off with My Curse Is My Redemption. The symphonic epic opening of this song is really important to set up the mood because it doesn't just set up the mood, it sets up the melody that the track has and allows the song to carry that melody through it. It becomes the experience of what this song is all about. This is also a track that gives room for the vocals to shine. It builds towards the experience. It's a song that builds from the verses all the way to the chorus. And when you get to the chorus, the vocals sound outstanding. The choirs and the vocals uh, uh, magnify that epic nature that this track has. And then the symphonic experience behind the choirs, with the choirs, just elevates the quality of this song. A very interesting track that starts off with that symphonic opening melody that stays grounded, that stays connected, and then it just gives you the necessarily ebbs and flows and growth to make this a very engaging track all around. Next you have Paradise, a more somber, melancholic song at times. It still has a great melody behind it. Uh, the keys on this track are outstanding. And it, it, because of its nature, because more of its melancholic nature, I felt like the vocals had a little bit more presence, they had a little bit more substance, they were a little bit more out front and then you were able to gravitate towards them and the sound is there almost as a backdrop to what is happening vocally and that's kind of how it feels. There are some stripped down moments in this track that enhance that experience of having the vocals in the forefront, allowing them to shine and to lead the way and then there's obviously some parts of this track that have a lot, of a lot more meat on the bone that feel a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. But the hookiness and the pop elements that you see in this track, specifically moving into the chorus, allows it to be memorable, allows it to be hooky. And that melancholy, that slight darkness that the song has, it's very well hidden with the overall melody and the vocal performance that puts forward. Last but not least, we have Scars a more introspective song. It feels a little bit more on the inside than it does on the outside. It's a song that still lives off of that symphonic backdrop. Uh, that is the main layer of the track, but in this song, perhaps a little bit more of a layer than in others. I don't feel like it's demanding your attention and it's driving the experience. You still feel the drums and guitars on a separate layer and then the vocals on a separate layer. If I had to put them, I would say that the symphonic elements are perhaps the ones that are deeper in the mix, drums and guitars in the middle and then vocals up front. It works really well because you're able to see all, all of these three elements driving in their own lane. You can see them interacting with one another, but what it does is it gives depth to the song. It makes the song feel a little bit bigger. It makes the song feel a little bit wider. And because of that, you get that introspective sense out of the track. You just get a different experience using all the same elements, but putting them together differently in a different order, in a different format, with different production behind them, really allows you to get a different experience out of this song while everything stays very similar to everything that you heard before. This is it, Xandria with The Wonder Still Awaiting out February 3rd on Napalm Records. 
Let me know your thoughts on the band on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.